Hello everyone and welcome to Jen's World About Art. So today I am going to paint these elephants for you. I don't know why my screen's not on, but yeah. I'm going to paint these elephants for you. Um, so I've got to wet my watercolours. I'm using my core watercolours and I'm using hot press watercolour paper. So just make sure my paints are nice and wet. Then I am going to grab my size 8 brush, get a bit of cloth, and I'm going to start with the background on these guys. So there's a lot of trees, a lot of shrubbery, and the elephants are sort of grey. So I'm going to do the sky first. So for the sky, I'm going to go in with some ultramarine blue. I need my colour chart. I'm going to go in with some ultramarine blue, and I'm going to drop that in the top. I can actually go over the tops of the, the trees a little bit because they are, um, I'm going to use blue and green to mix up, blue and yellow to mix up a green, so the blue will actually blend in with the tops of the trees, so that's not an issue, not a problemo, so I can pop that in there like that, and then I'm going to go in, while that's still a little bit wet, actually I'm going to wet the background around the elephant, so I'm going to drag that down, cut around the shape of the elephant, cut around the shapes of both the elephants in fact and I can actually blend that green in so I'm just going to do that I've got to change one of the legs on that little elephant I'm not happy so I'm going to move a leg in a minute but first I'm going to do this background get this in and started take that around there take that down to the ground level so I'm just wetting the paper dragging that around wetting the paper like that, drag that right into there, like that, okay, that's a leg, that's the front leg, that's the back leg, okay, so I'm going to leave that there, make up a green, so I'm going to go a bit of sap green, that is not the right colour chart, awesome, where's the core colour chart, doesn't matter, I'm going to go sap, it's that one, pretty sure it's that one, there we go, and mix up a bit of yellow into my sap green to make these and I'm just going to drop that in wet wet on wet so it's quite a pale green I'll go darker after I'll let that bleed up into the sky a little bit cut around that elephant oops the elephant's got grey on his back so that's fine I'm going to fill in all of those shrubby areas and take that down to the ground line of both elephants. Like that. Alright, and then come across this side, do the same. that all the way around there and take that down underneath the trunk of that elephant it'll be darker there so I'm now going to add a little bit more of a blue green so I'm going to go same green and I'm going to go a bit more blue into the mix so a bit more ultramarine so a bit of sap green a bit more ultramarine while it's still wet I'm going to pop in some darker tones at the bottom just to and while it's yeah, it's all still wet in wet keeping it um nice and soft because they're distance they're not gonna I don't want them to draw the focus I want them to remain in the distance and I don't want it to be solidly dark I'll do it even a little bit darker at the bottom towards the ground level they're actually standing at a like a water hole a muddy sandbar so I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to add a little bit of a darker green while it's still wet, make up a darker green. So even more blue into the mix. And I might add a little touch of brown as well. A little touch of brown just to, like, to make it look a bit, I want it to look khaki. So I'll add a little bit of brown to that and that'll make my green khaki. And I'll take that into the bottom bit. 
like that into the darker areas. Anywhere that you can see is a little bit darker, like that, that khaki coloured green. So that's just blue, a, a pre-mixed green, ultramarine blue, sap green, and a touch of brown makes khaki. Which is that earthy sort of brownie green that I'm having along the bottom here. I'll take it along and I'll actually, I'll take it up and see if it's like on branches. It sort of creates a bokeh effect, keeps it interesting because the, I don't want them in focus because the elephants are the focus. So I'll just take that around all of these areas that are still damp so it'll blend and soften as it goes like that take it down and around that side and there we go okay so now ground so the ground is a sand color so I'm gonna go yellow ochre and I might add a little bit of, what am I going to add, a little bit of brown to that. Just to, a bit of ready brown just to make it a bit more of an earthy tone. Water it right down. And bring it down around the bottom of the elephant, the back of the elephant. So that's the sand colour. There's, it comes right down. Because it's just standing at the edge of the water. I'm going to change that leg. Am I going to change that leg? Hmm. No, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll leave it. And I'll come down here. Drag that down. Like that. Hello, Dinka Chicka. How are you? Good morning. Good morning, good morning. I hope you're having a lovely day. I'm yeah, getting in with these elephants with my core watercolours and I've got, they're standing on the edge of a water bank. So I hope you're having a lovely day. I've had a wonderful morning so far. Uh, there's, there's a gap here. That's the back leg there. So I'll come into there. Oops. Like that. Okay, so that was yellow ochre and a touch of brown to make that earthy colour and then I'm going to take that or it's a little bit reddish on that side but it doesn't matter because sand is all different colours and it's a sort of muddy muddy mixed up sort of sand here I'll fill that in like that where's that leg go so it comes down here so he's, the water's down here you're from India? Wonderful, wonderful, beautiful part of the world. How have you been? Nice warm weather, I suppose. You're because you're on the same well, similar side of the planet to us. We're Southern Hemisphere. I'm Australia. So you have these guys, these elephants in the wild. There, I've only ever seen them in zoos and in places like that. I'm Australia. I'm Australia. Um, and the water is brown. It's a darker brown. What am I going to do for that? Uh, I might go, try the sepia, I reckon. Go a bit of sepia for the water. Yeah, I'm an Australian artist. So that's the water area. It's going to come down here. So that's sepia. And I'll add some different colours amongst it. I'll add a little bit of blue. Bless you too, Dale. Bless you too. Um, I'll add a little bit of blue. Oops, not that blue. A bit of a different blue. A bit of that blue to the water, into the shadow areas. So I'll let that blend in. We'll see how this goes. I'm not very good at backgrounds. Um, I'm um, more of a, a, a portraitist than 
background. I'll do my best. The elephants are going to be the focus. I'll let that... I'll take that like that. Okay, now I'm going to add shadows. To, I'll just that doesn't that is not going to be the focus, but that's just showing you that it's there. Okay, so I'm going to make some more yellow ochre and add a bit more brown to that to darken up this sand. There's shadow colours here, so there's a shadow on the sand there. I've got to get the darker areas in as fast as I can while it's all still a little bit damp that the shadow behind there I can I'll make them very dark later like I'll add make them um, almost purple down down when I get closer to the end I'm sort of always thinking ahead on how I'm gonna make what I'm gonna make things um, how I'm gonna make them act on the paper and where things are gonna be I might darken that right up take that shadow up there Right, like that, so, so it's a greeny sort of a shadow. Then under there, mix a bit more of that up. So sepia, yellow ochre. I'll take that along the grass line as well. Like that, because that's all shadow there. Just wet the brush, dampen the brush, take that all down there just to blend it a little bit. Excuse the sound in the background. That's my little dog sitting under my desk, chewing on a chewy thing. All right, I'm going to leave that alone for a minute. I've got to darken the edges of the water. So I need my... Um, hmm. I need my my other colour chart. I can't find it. Where's my other colour chart gone? Oops. <laughs> Doesn't matter. So I'm going to get some brown. It's a very ready brown and I'm going to take that, actually I need it to be a bit darker than that, so I'm going to go brown and a bit of red. I'm going to darken up this edge of the water where the water is because the sandy bit where it's been churned up right at the edge is darker. I've got to make up a darker, a darker, darker colour needs to be even stronger than that. Um, just going to have a look, just bear with me for a second. While I search my colours. And don't find it. Hmm, interesting. Alright, I'm going to go to my little cord container and grab my burnt umber. Burnt umber. So we're going in with burnt umber around this edge of the muddy bit and around this bit. So pure burnt umber like that. Right. And then I'll even, I'll make up a shadow colour. So I need purple. So a deep dark purple. So I might go my dioxazine and add some, some darker tone to it. Just to muddy it up so it's not so strongly purple. There we go. Now I'm going to, I'm going to strengthen up these shadows in and around here so it's a dark purple I've added some burnt umber to the purple to strengthen that shadow and I'll take that around the edge of the water and blend it in 
around the front of his feet. There, fill in there, like that. There we go. Get the shadows down onto there. And what's happened here? So he's got one front leg there, one sort of in behind. It's a little bit wrong. Looks a little bit wrong, but we've, we can just and then come up here so those shadows are there I should probably join them like that like that there we go so I've got the shadows under the elephants pretty much I can take that diluted into the water as well like that and add some interesting shadow tones to the water because there is reflections of shadows in there as well let that be right and I'll even take that shadow tone to the back in the background to the to the very bottom at the background because it's projecting little shadowy bits as well like that right I'm going to leave the background alone now and get on to the elephants right so for the elephants I'm going to make a grey with burnt umber, so clean your palette a little bit and go burnt umber, cobalt blue, or ultramarine blue in this case actually to make a grey. Ultramarine blue, burnt umber makes a lovely natural grey. And I'm going to use that very diluted to begin with. And because these guys are a brownish colour, actually that's not enough, I need to dilute that more. Like that. You can move it around a little bit. So I'm going to come down onto the nose. And I'm just going to block in the shape. Get the colours in. Like that. Cut around his little eye. An, there's an ear over there. So I'm just going to continue on. So this is a cool grey. I will add some warmer tones as I get into it. I can actually just go over the whole thing like that. I can just wash the whole thing. So I'll do that. Just, and that'll, that'll fade back. That'll uh, dry back a couple of tones lighter which makes life a bit easier. Um, so I sort of, because I know the colour shift, it does make it easier to use the different colours. Once you get to know your watercolours, it really does help. And this is, I'm using my core watercolours, but all watercolours have a little bit of shift. Even my, my Sennelias, my Schminkies, they all do. They all change a little. All right, I'm happy with that. Get onto the baby elephant. Pop in most of her colour. How am I gonna, she's got a leg like that. She's got both her sort of front legs together at the front, that's fine. So I'm just gonna block in this. Put that leg around the front. there all right cool cool so now while it's still damp I'm gonna make up a brownie sort of earth tony um, skin tone I'm gonna add a bit of bit of I really need a bit of sienna a bit of a bit of burnt sienna Transparent brown oxide, in fact. Let's do that. And a bit of brown. A bit of umber. A bit more brown oxide to warm it up. 
and now I'm going to take that onto this part of this elephant and I'm going to dilute it quite a lot and take that down in here. So that, uh, that under that leg is in the shadows and that leg is nearly completely in shadow. So I'm just popping this into the shadow areas on both little elephants, the elephant and her calf. Her trunk, that part of her trunk's in shadow. It comes down here, down there like that, then the underneath. I take that down there. All right, that eye's in shadow. So I can, I'm just popping the darker areas. Like I said before, it will fade back. It will have colour shift. Um, so I'm not worried about it being terribly dark. There's a shadow there. There's a shadow on this side. So pop that in. The front of that leg's in shadow. The ear's bright. The ear's bright, so I'll... Um, down the front here darken up that leg and there'll be even darker shadows down the track but I'm just getting them sort of blocked in at the second um, come around here I'll wet that to dilute it and take it up onto the back that. Just got to, I've just got to soften this. So I'm going to wet my brush, just clean water, and drag that sort of down the nose, just to blend that a little bit. Don't want quite such a hard line that that's got. So I just, if I scrub that just with a clean wet brush, just soften that edge a little bit, which didn't really work. But anyway, we'll figure that out. Um, things are changeable. Everything's fixable. So now this little bubba has got this side of her head's in shadow and I can add more detail to which I intend to do with um, pen and ink so I'm just blocking things in now I've got to get the shadow on that leg this leg coming into there there we go Shadows up here. Like that. All right. Now, what did I use for that? I can't remember. Burnt umber and sienna. That's right. Burnt umber and that red brown. Like that. All right. Take that into the leg. This big guy. around, up and around, it's got red belly, around there, so just warming them up, getting warmer tones on their skin, alright, while it's wet in wet, I'll do the same there, that leg sort of wraps around the trunk, I'll do that, so I'm just taking the warmer parts onto the brow of the little elephant. All right, I can drag, soften up those puddly bits so they don't dry as hard lines. All right, I'm going to soften that around the edge of the forehead of that little elephant. All right, now going to go even a stronger tone. I'm going to go burnt sienna, burnt sienna, burnt sienna natural, yes, burnt sienna. And I'm now going to take that so it's less water, but the water, the paper's still damp, still quite damp. I'm going to start to add a little bit 
lack of detail to this big beautiful elephant in the foreground. So I'm just going to sort of guide in the lines and the texture on her nose and start to get her looking more like an elephant, less like a flat thing. There we go, give her some more shape. Down there. I've got to do very dark shadows into the bottom of her trunk. All right, now transparent sienna, or oh, sorry, red, uh, what is it? Um, burnt sienna. Burnt sienna. That's what I'm using, which is a lovely warm colour. I'm going to pop it's her ear. She's got Lines sort of come around the top of her back. I can blend that in a bit. I want to soften that edge like that. Go around her eye. Like that. Her eyes are golden too. They've got gorgeous golden eyes. Around there, and she's got shadow there. All right, they're starting to look a little bit like elephants. Come down the front of her leg, and it's just layers. It's just building lots of layers, and I'm making sure that the background's just quite plain. I, I haven't gone to any fuss. Um, I don't want that to be the centre of the, fo the focus of the picture. I want the elephants to be the focus, so I haven't gone. I've suggested the background. It's just suggested simply, very simply. I've got to darken up the bottom of that ear, so I'm just going to dilute that same colour. Come around the edges of her ear, like that, just to suggest that. I've got to soften that edge. All right. And take that up. There. All right. So, come up onto the belly. Right, we're getting there. They're starting to look right. I'm happy. Right, so now, and I'm always surprised. You know, I never ever know that something's going to work. I always hope it does, and I aim for it to do it to work. But I never ever have a hundred percent guarantee that my pieces are going to work. So you know, it's as much a surprise to me sometimes as it is to you all, which can be entertaining. <laughs> so that leg actually comes. It's, it's off to the side a little bit. It looks a bit wonky, but it's how it is. Um, not a hundred percent happy with my drawing of my calf. I've done it a little bit different than what I should have. Um, so I'm just going to get some details into that now. But she'll come. She'll get better. She'll get better. Um, I might even. Can I? I don't know whether I can change it or not. I shouldn't. I might leave it. I'll leave it. Come down the front of her trunk like that. Because I've done it slightly different to the actual reference. I've given, I've made it, she had a curly tuck trunk in the reference, but I've made her tuck trunk straight in this. But that's fine. I'll keep it that way because I actually quite like the length of the trunk down the front. And I got my reference picture off unsplash.com, which is a great royalty-free reference site where they have all kinds of photographs of all kinds of everything. You can go animals, landscapes, portraits, you name it. They've got, they've got references for it. Um, and you can use them 
in your channels because they're not copyrighted which is really handy because I'm not good at getting out well lockdown can't get out and take photographs and I've only got a limited supply of my own references so it's really good to have sites online that you can get references from so there's the ones I use the main ones I use Pixabay, Pixabay and Unsplash that's actually a hump on the little bubba's back. Or I might make that the ear. That's better. That's fine. We'll do that. And down. Onto his. There we go. Now, I'm going to go a little bit more. Um, what am I going to do here? I'm going to go a bit of, bit of brown into my transparent sienna. A little bit of burn umber into there. Just to brown it off a little bit more. And I can start to get the darker areas, which will end up really dark. But I had to add warmth first. I had to get the warmth into the, the skin of these guys. Now, and then under here, this little one has tusks too, but I'm not giving it tusks. That leg comes down behind the trunk, down there, like that, into the foreground, go around her little eye a little bit. All right, I'm happy with that. And then the same transparent sienna burnt umber, just to brown it off and darken up this ear. It's off in the distance. And darken up the trunk. Giving it the shape for the lines because they've got lots of texture on their little trunks. Like that, and I'll blend that, damp my brush, and just drag that down to there, like that. All right, cool. And she's actually got a brown of forehead. I was going to say thorough brow. She's got a browner brow like that and I've got to do a very dark shadow under the so I'm going to get some more burnt sienna some more brown umber burnt umber red, red sauce <laughs> burnt sienna burnt umber and start to work on mama mama elephant so I'm going to go into here come down the back of that leg and blend it Going in the shape of the elephant's probably the wisest, but sort of going lengthwise. Okay, underneath, I'm going to darken up the underneath of her trunk like that. Get that more defined. Burnt umber. And transparent sienna, burnt sienna, sorry. I always call it transparent sienna. It's a habit from my old colour mixes. I'm going to go around her eye now and get some detail happening around here. Blend that out a little. Like that soften up that brown and come down onto here like that down onto her trunk area like 
like that, and around there. All right. Blend that down a fraction, like that. Then her ear. I'm going to come down and around her ear. I've got to darken that right up. Under there. I have not drank my coffee. I need to have a drink of my coffee. All right, take that down. Whoop, that's very diluted. I probably should have made that a little bit thicker, but that's okay. Because <coughs> the underneath was quite dry, it didn't bleed and do horrible things. Um, that back leg's a little bit darker. Take that to there, like that. All right, and then darken up this leg. And take that right into there, like that. So you can see this is lots and lots of layers. This is like layer number five on both the little elephants. So again, mix up some more, burnt umber. And trans uh, sienna, not transparent sienna, sienna, <laughs> burnt sienna, that's the one. And now I'm going to pop her knee textures in on that front leg. Blend that all out and around. Like that. All right, around like that. Okay, I'm quite happy with how that's coming along. I do have to take that down the length of the trunk because that needs to be more tonally interesting. that. They're coming to life now. Doesn't take much, just takes a few layers, a few shadow tones, and it keep, brings things to life just nicely. I've got to come around the back of her ear, give that ear a little bit of contrast, darken up that hip a little bit. All right, cool, that's looking cool. That is definitely looking cool. Okay, burnt umber, more burnt umber. Might go more pure burnt umber for this. I've got to go around this little one's eye. Around the little bubba glubber's eye. And the eye on that side as well. Like that. She's darker, much darker under there. That leg goes forward and underneath her trunk. The other leg sort of disappeared off behind a bit. So that's fine. And that leg's almost completely in shadow. I needed to add a little bit more red into that. It's a little bit too brown. I'm going to go a little bit more red. Sienna. A little bit more sienna. A little bit more burnt umber. Just make up another mix just with a touch more sienna, burnt sienna in it. There we go. And take that onto this back leg and back around this part that I've already just done under there brown up her tum tum like that and the belly it's just a matter of getting the tones right or as close to right as you can being braver with shadows Make them darker than you think they need to be. Like I'll darken these ground shadows up a bit more. That'll keep them interesting. Come around the back of that leg. I've got to blend that leg in a bit more. It's a bit too bright at the back. There we go. That's a bit better. 
need it to be lighter, but not quite that light, maybe. Now I'm just going to go in with my damp cloth and just lift that off a fraction, like that. All right, so, right, I'm going to make up a purpley brown now. I'm going to go brown and blue to make a grey. And I'm going to strengthen up these shadows, because that's her tum. Goes around there like that, goes all the way up. A little tum tum like that and then the back of this leg is in shadow and then all the way down the front of this leg I'll darken that up like that that leg hasn't got much a whole, I've got to darken up the inside of this leg as well not a lot of shape to it Um, here's where to go, burnt umber and ultramarine to make that grey colour because I've used a lot of burnt umber so it helps to unify painting using the same colours in it helps to unify it a lot uh, burnt umber and blue ultramarine right, and that makes it beautiful grey which I'm going to take now onto the bottom of her face. I'm going to take it round the edge of her ear because she is quite dark around this part and take that down onto her trunk and into the shadow areas down her leg like that and I'll blend that out actually I'll grab a little bit of water touch of water and move that around and do lines the shape of this little elephant bubba come around behind her ear I can pop a little bit of texture onto her ear she's got shadow there, dark shadow there uh, having a quick look at my reference and then because I've changed this from the actual reference I'm using the mother's nut trunk as a reference. So I'll, because her, in the, the bubba's ref, in the reference, the bubba's trunk was curled up, but I've made it long because I didn't want to do it exactly like the reference. So then, so I'm using the mother's trunk as the prompt for that. Okay, she's actually got her ear tucked around like that a bit. And it's shadowed underneath like that all right so I'm happy enough with that I've got to make a gray for her feet um, I'll make a bluish gray that's very purpley gray for her toes her toenails rather like that just to help to define those a little bit and you can only see like you can see a cup, one or two toes. What well, you only see one toe. I'll give her two toes. You see two toes there on that foot. You can't see the toes on the other front leg. Okay, now mama toes. So she's got a toe there, a toe there. I've got to add more definition to the the toe there. I've got to add much more definition. Hello, Mike. How you going? Hello, hello. Her toes in on this side. I'm starting to get the definition happening. And then I can see two of it, three of her toes on the back. That one, that one, and that one. Alrighty. So that's the greys for the toes. That's about as dark as that's the darkest part that I need. Now the golds and the eyes. You're wonderful. How are you? I'm awesome. Thank you, mate. I've had a wonderful day too. I'm going to use gold. What golds have I got? Actually, I'm going to get, use quinacridone gold for the eyes because they've got gorgeous gold eyes. I'm going to pop, pop quinacridone gold in there and then I'll pop little black dots into the centres 
because they've got gorgeous gold eyes. Now, I am going to go a bit of Venetian red. We're going to Venetian red now, which is a lovely colour. Is it early for you? It is lunchtime. So I've been over and I've done my Twitch stream and I really felt like painting. I was really inspired to paint. So I thought I'm going to come and do my art over here. But, um, but no, I'm good. Good, good. Happy camper. <laughs> but yeah, it's lunchtime. Just lunchtime. So I'm adding the warmer colour to the top. It's a bit that's hitting the sun. Like that. Take that down and around. So what are you up to today, Mike? What are you doing, Dal? And then come down and around here. So I'm adding the texture. I'm starting to add detail now. Just little by little. I've got to add very dark around... Not dark so much, just warmer around under there and around here. It really does help to lift things like that. Give them a bit more, bit more dimension. And I've got to get down the legs here so that bit's in sun. So I can warm that up, leave the under colours so you can see them through like that. I'm not going to do a whole lot more to the ears. And their suggestion, like the beauty of watercolour, it's not meant to be photographic. Watercolour is supposed to be loose, soft, expression, show your expression of what you're doing. It doesn't have to be super duper detailed. I streamed for a bit earlier. Fixed food and it's starting to get a bit later. Cool. Cool, cool. Me too. was fun. Alright, so I've got a bit of warmth on there. I've got to pop a bit more warm on her belly. So this is Venetian red. A bit of warm up here. Just to help strengthen that. I was having a quick look at my reference to make sure that she's coming along how I want her. And I'm happy. Get a bit more Venetian red. And pop it onto her tum tum. Onto her, actually onto her back leg. Onto that back leg that round there. Righto. And a little bit, I'm going to pop a little bit up here as well, behind that ear. Just a sort of dry brush almost. Like that. Alright. I'm happy with that. Now I've made this baby too dark. I've got to add some more cooler warms, like not cooler, more warms get away from the, get loose, soften the cooler colours. Get her a bit warmer, is what I meant to say. So I'll add a little bit more warmth down her trunk, a little bit more warmth down her belly, like that. Soften that up, like that. A quick look at my reference. I'm going to bring that sh that colour down that side of that leg, like that. That leg, that leg, I've got the shape off a little bit. I've messed up the shape just a little bit, just enough that it's annoying me. <laughs> so now I'll work on the other leg. Add that colour in and around. Some more warmer tone around the foot, like that. I love that. That first elephant has just turned out gorgeous. I'm really happy with how she is. All right, and I've got to. I've got. To, I'm going to re-wet my brush. See if I can lift this a little bit. Oh yes, I can. Awesome. So I'm just wet my brush, and then where I put the burnt umber before that, it's a little bit too strong. I'm just scrubbing that to soften it. I didn't want it to be quite so dark, so that's worked. Awesome. So you can, even if you if you think you've made mistakes, you can change things a little. You can still alter watercolours. Not the end of the world if something's not quite how you want it. 
and then I'll add the warm colour in. Like that. Nice. And I've got to blend that so to take my damp brush, whoops, wet my brush, make sure it's really wet. I can take that down and around. Bring it back towards the trunk. Like that. Because she is darker, she's much darker, this little bubba. Like that. I'm just going to get my damp cloth, touch around the eye. Rightio, what happened to your double camera setup? Because uh, I make time lapses, I don't have it. I make time lapses from my um, videos and it looks really terrible when you've got a face in the corner making all kinds of fast expressions. So I don't use a face camera on here because I know that I'm going to also use make time lapses out of the same videos and it's not conducive to a good video. Because I multi, I use everything. Okay, come around here. Yeah, that's why I don't have face cam on here because I double film. All right, I'm going to leave that alone for a minute, and I'm going to pop. I've actually, I've got to lift that a little bit. I've got it too. Now I've got it too much. I'm going to dob that with my wet it with a clean brush. Clean brush and then lift it just to soften that a little bit. Wet it and lift it. And it just knocks it back a tiny little bit. There we go. That's enough. Got to get a fresh piece of cloth because that one's all soggy. <sighs> right, now. Get a bit of gouache. I need a little bit of white gouache here to help me out. So I'm just going to grab my gouache palette, which is an opaque watercolour. It's still a water medium, but it's an opaque water medium. And when you lose your whites like I have done here, I can get them back by doing that. And it helps me to lift things up again. Hello, Sassy. How are you? We're getting there, we're getting there. Just having having a bit of fun and having a fiddle doll. Enjoying it. In, very much enjoying this painting. I do love I do love painting elephants a lot. I love painting elephants. They're one of one of uh, amongst my favourite subjects. Very definitely amongst my favourite subjects to paint. You're surviving is all oh that's no good, doll. That's no good. Well, it's good that you're surviving, but it's not good that you're just surviving. All right, I'm going to come up here and I blend that. That the, and the and the white on this does. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I totally love watercolors, and I totally love elephants. <laughs> They are my happy place. Them, what, uh, elephants and mice. I love painting mice. Absolutely adore painting mice and rabbits and things like that. Uh, now, what am I going to do? I'm going to pop a little bit of, bit of light down here. Just put a little bit of light on her tongue. And I've got to do their eyes. Their eyes are jet black. The centre of their eyes are jet black. Do I have a black? I don't have a black. So I don't own a black paint. <laughs> oh, I do in, in, oh, in gouache. I can use my gouache black. There we go. Let's do that. So they've got black pupil in their eye. Perfect little black pupil. Like that. Perfect. I'm happy with that. And I'm also going to use a little bit of the gouache ochre. Just a little bit. Because it's a beautiful natural colour. It's a gorgeous natural colour, in fact. Absolutely gorgeous. Just to get some of these 
and I might add a little bit of white to that as well. Add a little bit of white to it and come down. Just been sketching, trying to come up with my own geisha. Oh, cool! Cool. Very good. Did you find that reference photo? All right, I'm actually going to grab some white. Again, some gouache, white gouache for the front of Mama's trunk over here. Not all of it, just parts of it. Just in like a few little areas, just to like that. She's got a highlight on that foot. She's got light on that foot a little bit. So anywhere that I've lost the lights, and that'll dry back a few a few times. You did awesome. Glad to hear. Like that. Okay, now I can do the same for the little bubba. Do the same for little bubba. So I'm going to go a little bit of a lighter colour there. And get my white on my palette. A bit wider, a bit lighter up here. So I, made, I did darken her off a little bit too much. So I can get those highlights back now. Like that. And get a bit of a highlight there. Highlights down the front of her trunk, like that. Happy with that. Come down onto her leg a little. And then pop the highlight onto the front of her foot. Alright, I think Bubba's just about done. The baby one's just about done. I'm quite happy with how she's turned out. I'll leave her alone. It says she who keeps fiddling. And I'll come down the bottom there. Um, but change that a little bit, pop a little bit more light onto the top of that ear. Right. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm going to blend that a little bit though. I'm going to wet my brush, take the excess moisture off and just blend that a little bit. I made it a little bit too hard lined like that. That's better. And take it down the front of the trunk a little bit like that. All right, leave that alone now. Go to mum. I've got to go to the mama and let's have a look. So I've got to darken up. I've got to get some more red brown onto the mum. I've got to darken up here. So this is um, uh, core watercolours. So that's uh, in the Venetian red. Venetian red. So pop that onto her tum. So it helps to get more shape, a bit more form to them. Um, Pop a bit more of that warm red down there onto the air into under into her into her inner thigh down there like that. All right. So this painting has taken me nearly an hour, start to finish. The drawing probably took ten minutes. Um, very basic outline. Didn't go to a whole lot of fuss. Just got the shapes right. The important part is getting the shapes right. If you get the shapes right, everything else will come along. I'm going to use this shadow tone. It's dark purple colour onto that leg. Because that leg is completely in shadow. Let's just suggest it's there. I'll also take that shadow tone under here. Onto the underside of that leg. Because the, the darker the shadows, it really does really it brings things to life shadows make a painting if you don't go if you're not brave with colors everything just looks flat shadows bring life to a piece of work 100 percent. you can see even just by doing that that has made this pop that elephant looks much better even just with those little bits of color just little bits of color is enough and I've, that's dioxazine purple, and I added a touch of brown to it, like that. So yeah, dioxazine purple and a touch of brown. And now I'm going to take that along the bottom of her trunk, because the bottom of the mama's trunk is all dark. Like 
like that. And I've got it pre-made up on my palette. I love shadows. I adore shadows. Absolutely adore shadows. I've got to darken up the shadow in the bottom of her trunk because she's scooping up the water. Like that. Come around her eye. I can start to add wrinkly bits. Not all over her. You, if you end up, if you do them everywhere, you end up with way too much going on. So just add a few expression lines around her eyes. Same with bubble lugs over here. A few expression lines. Like that. And same on that side. And you can see that white has faded right back now. It's very subtle. So you can use gouache and it really does. It, it does dry back. And you barely even notice that you've used it. So now I'm going to pop in a little bit of shadow around the back of this ear. Like that. And onto her belly. A bit more dark shadow under there. Like that. Coming together. I've, she's missing stuff up. She's missing shadow up here. I've got to get some shadow onto her head. She's got a bit of shadow there. She's got a bit of shadow there. She's got a shadow above her brow. That helps to give that. And there's she's, she's got the sun shining on her back. So I'll just add a few little shadow lines there. But leave most of it light. And I've got to come down here with this purple as well. Come down here. Onto her chest because that would be darkest. She's much darker in there. Like that. Down that leg. There we go. I'm quite happy with that. It's very simple. I'm going to make up some more dark shadow for that bottom bit. Actually, I need some darks. So actually, I'm going to use indigo. I'm going to go indigo. And a bit of red. And a bit of brown. Just to really get a dark, 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 deep, gutsy purple. Oh, excuse me. I burped. Apologise for that. Okay. So it's a very purple grey. And I'm going to take that into the darkest shadow areas around the bottoms of the elephants. Just to get the, the, the most contrast beneath them. I want them to have a lot of contrast in the shadow areas at their feet. Like that. Anywhere that's darkest. So that goes up there. Because there, she's darkest there. And I'll take that shadow. Damp my brush. Drag it out. Like that. Cool. Same with that one. Into that shadow. Drag that out and around. Darken up in there. Like that. And that just gives the shadows a little bit more interest. Like that. And then I'm going to pop some ripples into the water with that shadow colour as well. Just helps to give it a bit more interest. Like that. Alrighty, I'm happy with that. I might just go some really dark shadow onto that off leg on that elephant. Just down in there like that. Because that leg is completely dark. Take that down there. Your contrast in your shadows is critical. Critical, critical. You can, you, when you think you've gone dark enough, go darker. And it really does help. I'm going to go under here. Like that. She's very dark around that part of her ear as well. 
So I can add a little bit of shadow or a bit more, a lot more shadow in there. Like that. There we go. Having another quick look. She's dark. This one's dark around her chest, so I'll darken up her chest. Around here. Because I haven't done anywhere near dark enough under there. Your dark, your last colours, your darkest, the strongest, darkest, most fun to put down, because that's when you see that everything just goes boom and is alive, and it's my favourite bit. <laughs> I love adding that last sort of flurry of bright. Well, the strongs make everything. The darks make everything else super light, even when they're not necessarily. There's an awful lot of breads, breads, reds and browns in this. And it just, that purple just goes, shazam, we got dark. And I've got to pop some veiny bits into her ears. So she's got veiny bits in her ears. And I'll make that bottom part of her ear a little bit darker, like that. She's got a bit of a shadow area there, so I'll dilute that down. Definitely makes it. Yes, it does. It does. That pop of colour at the end is probably one of the, the things people forget the most. They try, they stay safe and they don't add that zing of that real heavy dark. And one of my, I, I have an awesome friend who's an art teacher who is a wildlife artist who taught me to go just be bold. Be bold and when you think you've gone dark enough, go dark. <laughs> Whatever you think it is, multiply it. <laughs> But I reckon I'm going to call that done now. I'm going to sign it, take the paper off the edge, and, and call. I've got to change this little elephant's eye a little bit. And I'm going to call that done. I'm going to take the background doodah off so you can see it with nice clean edges, like that. And I am going to call that done, like that. There we go. I'll take the bottom one off as well. But then my picture will fall off. There we go. Whoops. Square that up again. So there we have it. My watercolour with a little bit of gouache elephants. And I'm going to use my sticky doodah to hold that down. My eraser. <laughs> my kneadable eraser. So there we go. So thank you so much for hanging out. Sassy and Mike and anyone who's been here. You guys and girls are awesome. Um, yeah. So I will be back. What day is it? Today's. The day after tomorrow. Oh, actually, I missed a bit. I missed a bit. I missed a bit. I'll do another. Well, I might do another stream tomorrow if I feel the feel the urge. But we shall see how the mop flops. I've just missed a bit. I've got to do it down here. Is it shadow here that I've missed? And her toe. That's it. I just need to blend that in. I just need that little bit of contrast right there. I can disappear that bit. Okay. Now I'm happy. Now we're done. <laughs> so thank you so much again, everyone. Have an awesome day and I will see you next video. Alrighty. Thanks, Sass. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, everyone.